Hi, this is Anna. In this video, we are going to understand HTTP POST request. This is our ASP.NET Core Web API project. In our last video, we have discussed HTTP GET request and how to handle HTTP GET request in ASP.NET Core Web API. If you are interested, do check the description. You will find playlist link for all the related videos. As discussed earlier, HTTP supports different methods and we use them based on our requirement. An HTTP POST method is used to send data to a server to create or update a resource. While discussing HTTP request and response, we have discussed about this HTTP request structure. HTTP request will have request line, request headers and message body. In case of HTTP POST method, all the data will be sent in message body. But in case of HTTP GET request, message body will not be used. HTTP POST request will have a message body and it will contain actual data. POST request allows for sending larger amounts of data. Let's take an example. In our case, we are building to-do list web API. And client wants to create new to-do item. Then client will send HTTP POST request. Web API will receive that HTTP POST request and it will have necessary controller and action methods written to handle that request and that POST request will be handled appropriately. This is our Web API and this is the project structure. We are working on controller based Web API so here we have controllers folder. Inside this folder we have to do controller. This to-do controller has action method get all, which is written to handle HTTP get request and it has one more action method. Again, this will handle HTTP get request. This action method will be called if ID has been passed in the request. Here we have private method map to-do item to DTO. This method will map this to-do item model to to-do item DTO. Now, as part of this application, we are going to add one more action method that is going to handle HTTP POST request. Let's add one more action method. It's going to be public. Return typo is going to be I action result and I will name it as create to do item. This action method is going to handle HTTP POST request. Thus, we are going to specify HTTP POST attribute. We are going to specify HTTP POST attribute. As part of POST request, we are going to create new to-do item. This is going to receive to-do item DTO. It is going to receive new to-do item of type to-do item DTO. As you all already know, HTTP POST request will contain data in message body. And data may be in the form of XML or JSON. And we want to tell the framework to deserialize the JSON data or XML data into this to do item DTO. How do we do that? To do that, we specify one attribute that is from body attribute. If we specify this attribute, then framework deserializes that data into whatever the instance we are using. In this case, data will be deserialized into to do item DTO. That means particular attributes will be mapped accordingly. First, we are going to check if this new item DTO, whatever the data is passed, it is not null. We are going to write if condition and we are going to check if new item DTO, if this is null, then we are going to return bad request. If whatever the data we have received is not null, next we are going to create, next we are going to create new item and we are going to map this new to do item DTO to the object of type to do item. We are going to map this to do item DTO to this to do item. In this case, we have considered this is our DTO that means data transfer object. We use this for transferring data. But after receiving data from client, we want to store it somewhere. It could be a database or some other system. In our case, we have prepared this sample list. Consider this as a data that is coming from a database. This, this is our test data. When we actually implement database, then we are going to modify this. For now, consider this uh, consider this as our data store. We have considered to do item as our domain model. 
that means the model that is going to be used by the database. That is the reason we are going to do the mapping before storing. See, here we are doing the mapping and here we are generating IDs for new item. After this mapping, we are going to add this new item to to-do item list. Next, we are going to return proper code to the client. Now, we are going to return the newly created to-do item along with the 201 created status code. When we add new item, 201 is the status code. We are going to return, use return keyword, call the method created at action. This is our created at action method. This method returns 201 as status code. That stands for new resource has been created. Here if you see, the first parameter specifies the name of the method that is to be invoked. And we are going to pass the ID and this is the new ID. Our code is complete. Now we are going to verify this new functionality. Let's run this web API. This is Swagger UI. Now we are able to see new endpoint that is post endpoint. If you want to test this, just click on this endpoint and click on try it out. Now I'll pass new title. This is our new to do item. Is it complete? No. So I'll pass false. You can pass ID or you can keep it as it is. It is optional because we are calculating based on the existing IDs. Now you can click on execute. See? See, this is the curl and this is the request URL. You can see that we have received 201 as the code. And here, here you can see this is the response body. Let's verify this by executing get all items. Now, here we have this action method get to do. We can click on try it out. You can click on execute. See, we're able to fetch all the IDs. Look at this ID. ID has been updated to three and this is our new item. In these endpoints, we are not able to see the action method names. That is because if you look at this web API, see, look at the route template. Here we have specified API slash controller name. If you want to see, if you want to see action method name in the endpoint, then we are, then we have to modify this. I will specify action method name. Now we can see action method name in the endpoint. Now we are able to see action method name in the endpoint. This helps us to understand which endpoint is going to perform which functionality. So here we have get all. This is get to do item by ID and this is create to do item. This is how we can handle HTTP POST request in ASP.NET Core Web API. Very important thing to remember is to use this HTTP POST address. That's it for today's session. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.